Ashley has been tracking this for several days now. One of the challenges, Ashley, was the models you said weren't quite synced up at the beginning. And now what we look at severe weather, you said it could be traumatic activity, but we also have straight line winds to consider. Right, all threats are on the table with this because we're not just tracking a cold front pushing through that typically would bring more of the straight line wind event. We have a low pressure system, so a ton of instability and convection that could lead to some rotation as well. But damaging wind gusts will be the primary threat today. We're going to talk more about it in a second. I want to kind of dissect exact track 4D to get you out the door today as we have several lightning strikes across lower Michigan. This is with a lifting warm front. So just instability from that heat humidity, giving us some popcorn showers. I will circle this area between Chicago and Indianapolis. That's what's going to be the round one in the afternoon. And then we will have round two down here, which is north of St. Louis. That comes in the evening. So if you consider this kind of scattered variety round one, then we're talking really three rounds, but only two rounds of potentially severe weather. And those are what I just circled for you on the map right there. I want to zoom in just a little bit closer here to southeastern Michigan to show you what we have going on. And so most of that lightning is now pushed east of Detroit. So we're finally going to start to catch a little bit of a break. That's going to allow that atmosphere to re-energize as we head into the afternoon hours. And so temperature wise right now, we are sitting well into the 70s across southeastern Michigan with that southerly flow. Hourly forecast, given that the rain does arrive in the heat of the day. Our temperatures won't be much warmer than they were yesterday. Still above average, but 85 for the afternoon high with the strongest severe weather coming in two waves this afternoon. So west of Metro Airport is where we have the enhanced risk and all of southeastern Michigan, at least under a level two risk on a five level scale. And so we could see large hail. Flooding is definitely a possibility with heavy rain and the tornadic activity is mentioned within both rounds. However, damaging wind gusts are the primary threat today where those winds could reach upward of 70 miles per hour. That could create damage that is just like a tornado. And so before severe weather season arrived, I sat down with an expert at the University of Michigan to tell you why you need to take those straight line winds just as seriously as a tornadic event. When you see storms on radar, they might start in a scattered nature fueled by moisture in the environment, and sometimes those storms become linear. And when they do, they are likely severe. The backside winds can actually become stronger than the winds ahead of the storm, forcing the line to bow out. Meteorologists refer to this as a bow echo on radar, which indicates the strongest area of wind. But I want you to take a closer look at this. When an area of wind damage extends, more than 250 miles paired with wind gusts along a path at or greater than 58 miles per hour, then you have a derecho. Meteorologist Lauren Casey of Climate Central explains how a warming climate is energizing our atmosphere, which in turn can lead to more extreme wind events like this. More warmth, more moisture, more instability that allows these storms to grow stronger more quickly and also to sustain themselves for longer periods of time. In Michigan, you can see where you get some sometimes derechos or a long line of very strong thunderstorms that produce those damaging winds and that continue to track for hundreds of miles and cause a lot of damage in their path. So come with me so we can translate what you see on radar compared to what you see at the surface when a thunderstorm is rolling through. So located near the base of a thunderstorm, is a shelf cloud. These are wedge shaped and typically associated with severe winds. Now this warmer, more humid air gets pushed above the cooler air, helping to develop the tall, ominous clouds that are associated with thunderstorms. Damaging winds occur when the storms are able to pull fast winds from the atmosphere down to the surface through a downdraft. I spoke with Professor Marsick at the University of Michigan about why wind events become more dangerous when paired with heavy rain. That will exacerbate the situation. Maybe some trees that are older, especially maybe their root systems aren't quite as strong, um, could topple over. And that's what happened you know, two years ago. We had uh, uh, the 20, 23rd and 24th, we had that you know, extreme rain event um, and lots of flooding. And then just 24 hours, a series of storms that came through producing 70 mile per hour winds and really significant damage, um, tens of millions of dollars across Southeast Michigan. So how can you prepare? Well, of course you want to remove dead trees on your property ahead of wind storms to reduce the risk of them falling. However, something to keep in mind when changing the landscape on your property is that enclosed trees grow tall to capture sunlight without having to deal with wind loads around them that ultimately makes them grow larger roots. But by cutting back some of those trees, the remaining trees are suddenly no longer in a closed environment and become exposed to high winds 
skins, which makes them more susceptible to damage. The best way to avoid trouble is just to make sure that these transitional tree zones are a safe distance from your home. You know, what's interesting when you talk about those straight line winds is every time that we go to cover storm damage after the fact, mm -hmm. right? And you settled in there that the damage can be just as bad as a tornado. 100%. We, because the National Weather Service usually isn't that by the time that the morning show is out, us reporters are mm -hmm. out there. So we'll be walking around all morning long. I'm saying we don't know yet if this was a tornado or straight line winds. But you've probably become a mini expert because when you're out there, you see if all of the trees or that damage is in one direction compared right. to snapped in different right. directions, which then would indicate a rotating storm. So that's one of the things that they're looking at when they send their survey teams out mm -hmm. is just how that damage appears and what direction it was hit. Um, but when it comes to straight line winds, when we're looking at radar, it's a little easier to pinpoint where the winds will be the strongest because as I pointed out on that radar image, you start to see the line bow out. Think of a bow and arrow. And so the apex of the bow is going to have the strongest winds. And so that's where as that line's rolling through, you know that you're going to have the potential for damaging wind gusts that could be just as damaging as mm -hmm. tornadoes. But we're talking this afternoon, a low pressure system rolling in. So it's not necessarily a distinct line. And that's creating a lot of instability across the area in which, you know, you could see a couple of different rotating storms pop up across the area. And those are harder to pinpoint exactly where the rotation sure. is going to occur. Right, so right. I do think there's, a, I mean, it's tricky nonetheless, everything that you're forecasting with a complex convective system. But I think it's easier, a little easier at least to get the, you know, straight line winds down compared to where those tornadoes are going to pop. So in terms of preparing for a storm, is there anything we should be doing at home, getting ready for what's coming later? Yeah, so regardless of what's on the table today, whether it would be straight line wind damage or tornadic damage, and fingers crossed, we don't have either, right? Sure, but right. now is the time to, if you have one of those big patio umbrellas, take that down, yes, you know, and right. maybe not even just close it, like take it out of the, like, if it's in the table, like yeah. take it out, lay it flat, right. because all of that can be, you know, projectile debris as we are looking at the evening hours. So um, yeah, I would say just make sure that all your patio cushions are stored and, um, and, and that's, you know, softer, but like, especially those umbrellas, things like that, you want to make sure that that, because that will create more damage. The other thing too, which I think is interesting is when you have a tornado coming through and the difference in pressure, um, you want to make sure your windows are closed sure. and more importantly, that your garage is closed too, oh, because sure. that right. could just absolutely suck in all of that right. air. And right. then you're talking about roofs coming off, things yeah. like that. So make sure that everything is just, in, you know, enclosed, just like you would be inside your house. Yep. Yep. Not to make light of it, but I, I recall seeing a lot of photos uh, of people prepping for storms, mm -hmm. usually in the south more often, but right. they'll take a lot of their patio furniture and just throw it in the pool. Oh, right. That's interesting. Well, you know, but you it, just, yeah, you don't want it flying around. Right. I thought about it. I'm like, why is it? And, oh, okay. So that way it doesn't fly around because usually if it's submerged, you can't, the tornado isn't going to pick it up. Hopefully not. Exactly. But, you know, and that's what you, a lot of times you see, like the big trampoline, like you can't put that anywhere, but those right. are the ones that are mangled and in somebody right. else's yard. Right. And, you know, yeah. it's easy for that to right. be picked up. Three blocks away. <laughs> right. Here's your new trampoline. Don't jump on it. <laughs> right. All right, Ashley, thank you so much.